nice foggy morning out there. We might give it a little bit before we uh, head on out because we can't see anything at all. What do you reckon? Well, we've come down to the creek sets. I think we just got a little bit unlucky here. Sit, go, no, up, 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 get up, get up, get up. Nothing's been near that one. We've had one dog come down through here. That set's not touched. The dog's come down through here. <sighs> Jesus. That's my prints there that I put in. The dog step there and there, either side of the trap. Pan is here. What I do notice here is that some small critter has dug here and actually has pulled the um, scent that I've made here, my homemade um, stink bomb, has dug it out the side of the bank. It was there. It's not the dog hasn't done that, that looks like a small critter. Bandicoot or something like that has dug that out. Them's the brakes. Literally, I probably should have had a little bit of brush. I tried to keep it very simple, very plain, but I'd say this dog has stepped straight through there and the chances are it stepped this much to one side of that pan. I'm right down here in the bottom corner of this property and uh, I see a little bit of sign. I haven't been trapping here because it's the furthest sort of remote um, point to get to. And uh, I reckon I've got dogs here. I'm looking down into our next door neighbours and I can hear crows. I can hear crows talking away down there in the one place and I could do that from the other side. Yesterday I could hear crows down there. So I reckon we've got a dead beast down here, down this gully. And that might be where the dogs are at the moment now. I'm here with a, a white shirt on. The two Border Collie dogs have got my hat. Not the perfect uh, apparel for trying to shoot a dog, but I've only got the 22. But let's see if we can howl one in. Get him in close, get him under 50. That's about the fourth howl I've done down this big valley. Not a call back, not an answer anywhere. I thought I would have got like a, at least a reply. So what we're gonna do this morning is, is go around and check some of the big rock piles and see if we can find uh, the den where that uh, bitch had her pups. I don't think it'll be that far away from that dead beast. I think she would have brought her pups in closer to a good feed source. That's probably what she's used to rear those pups. Um, so they should be up and quite agile, quite mobile now. They should start to make a bit of noise. And even if I give a little howl at them, they might give a bit of a call back. We'll see if we can find them dogs, eh? Now these are the sort of things you need to be mindful of as a trapper. If you're coming along here to set traps, uh, what you see on the ground should tell you what native animals are around. If you get to a spot where there's a lot of activity, like up here, that hole with all the wear around it, you know there's possums living in there, okay? 
you can look at the stains on the side of some of the bloodwood trees where the, the sap leaks down. You know there's a glider possum living there. You look here and there's digs in the ground here, little dig holes. There's a bandicoot here or a narsuta. So all these things will tell you where you should not set traps. See a dog track there on the tra road. A few days old. We got skunk. Well, we got skunk. You can smell him. Good boy. It's been a big dog traveling pretty fast. See the points there as well. Moving pretty fast going up here. It just comes through this creek crossing here and there's fresh tracks there. As I walk down to have a look, look here, there's a fresh scout here. So, maybe we've got a good chance. I set a basic trap straight in here on one side in the wet sand. On the edge of the water, I'll put a, uh, a bit of a scent there, see how we go. I gunned it to get through here. I wasn't really sure with how soft it was going to be. But I get here and look at the dog tracks on this side. This is where our dogs are. They're right down on this creek, the furthest corner of the property. Well, I've just found this little guy in one of our traps. He's here, he's not hurt, he's just caught, so I'm just going to try and get him out as quick as I can and let him go. It's a little Rufus Betong, and uh, he should be okay. We'll just let him go, get him back to his nest. Now, any trapper worth his salt hates that, hates to see bycatch. Uh, but that is the beauty of those soft jaw or the uh, rubber jaw traps that you'll hold them if you're checking your traps all the time they'll hold that animal and it'll be okay uh, that bloke didn't have anything broken he had a little bit of hide off on one side there a little bit of hair off but uh he's not bleeding and uh, nothing broken yeah as i say it's unfortunate but what do you do wild dogs kill them every night uh, so you get a pack of dogs out there, they'll run them down and kill them, eat them, bandicoots, possums, everything. So wild dogs are just killing, killing machines. Um, if we were to kill one of those in a trap and you leave it out here and the dogs and the wedge tail eagles eat it, all you've done is you've, you've, you've taken their place. You've actually killed one of the things they would have killed anyway. What we're finding is because we've got the dog numbers down back to what they probably used to be in this country. There's, there's dingoes in here, everywhere, but their numbers are down and they're not really hitting the calves. I'm trying to stay away from the areas, the real thick areas down here where they've got dry cattle and there's, there's um, no calves in there and the dogs aren't causing a problem. We're staying away from that. We're trying to trap in the area where the cows and the calves are. Uh, what we're noticing is just so much more native wildlife in this country. And this has got a lot more timber on this block than most other properties in the area. The landowner has been very responsible. He's clearing some or thinning out some timber, but most of it he's letting come back, the good straight stuff, and, and uh, taking this back to what it probably used to be. And it's all this native wildlife back in here. Uh, doing a brilliant job, this landowner. So, righto. Every now and again, we have a... We have a problem like that sorry guys but we're handling it the best way we can well guys i really think we've been handed our ass this time um, i just I don't know what's going on. One set of fresh tracks, that's all we've seen in the middle ground, so the middle of the property. We haven't checked half it yet, but one fresh set of tracks. 
we were right down in the far corner of the property and there was a lot of tracks there but still nothing really fresh you know nothing but the last couple of days oh get out you get out you're licking your bum uh, the one dog I reckon that's in the middle ground here, that's in the middle of the place, is going right past every lure, every trap, everything. It just sticks on the track, it will not commit at all. Now, I, I put it akin to when you're fishing sometimes, you can be right on your favourite spot, you can have all the best bait, and you try everything, and those fish just want to bite. And these dogs are sometimes like that too, they will not commit. This might be a bitch too that's that's uh, feeding pups. She might be one that's got young pups out there with her, um, like the other one we caught. And when they do that, they get very hawky. They just don't want to have anything to do with anything. They might only be eating what they kill, so they might not be interested in any of the food-based lures we've put out. And we've tried everything, haven't we, dogs? So no, it's just going to keep having faith in your sets, faith in what we've done. They just might not work. This was the trap that I had a lot of hope in. I was really thinking this would succeed. We get up here, cattle have been through here, stood on it and uh, yeah, popped it off. Okay, so I'm going to shift everything over here where I've got a little bit of a structure that I can work around, the cattle can't get at me. Oh, oh. This is the problem we've got. This problem we've got, putting in a really good set here now, and with another set over here, under there, put the old deer skin over in the middle here, and we've got this big lace monitor just watching me from the side. So all I can do is either shift everything I've done here. And this is where the dogs are coming into now. See where they've been here. We've just missed them last night. So cattle wrecked that trap. So I've either got to shift the traps and everything or I've got to catch this guy and um, take him away for a yeah, kilometre or two. And by the time he walks back, it should be all over. So here we go. The only way I've got a chance of catching this guy is if I go over here nice and casual. Nice and casual. And I just make a bit of noise and walk around here. And I just act as if I don't even see him. And what I'll try and do is just walk past him and not make eye contact with him. Okay, the dogs bailed him. Look at this big lace monitor. Hey, beauty. He's a ripper. That scratch. This fellow gets hold of you, scratch or bite, and he's. So if I get a bite from this guy, everything will fester up. Can you ripper? Look at him. Yeah, hiss at me. Righto, we'll shift him away from the traps. You might not believe it, but I got him in this plastic container. He's straight in there, so let's take him for a bit of a drive. See girls, you'd probably never believe it, but us bikes can multitask. Here's me, I'm driving a buggy, holding onto a goanna, and uh, filming at the same time, eh? Pretty cool. Get. Right, that might save a problem or two. Look at this beautiful old fella. Look at this beautiful big boy. Go on, mate. How you going? 
Boy. Get up there where it's safe. Well, we've done a lot of walking here. Um, up gullies like this here in the lantana. We've checked, I don't know how many lots of uh, big piles of rocks, little caves, and nothing, nothing so far. I think these pups are big enough that they'll survive. They'll be mobile. I think there's still time too over the next couple of days that they might just show themselves you know, come out of a, uh, an old carcass somewhere or a water hole. But, uh, yeah, I think we've done as much as we can at the moment. Well, we're heading out now on uh, morning seven. A very slow run, very slow. It's just like as if the dogs are not here. Anyway, we'll endeavour to persevere. Well done, Carl. Yeah, good hind there, one shot. Awesome. Okay, well we got there, we trapped that bitch, um, and this is, uh, yeah, this is the solar pup here, I think this would be one of hers, um, old enough to sort of look after themselves, they're about that, you know, 10, 12 weeks old, little one, um, just shot that one, it, uh, as we come up to the top of this hill here, it actually barked at us, it actually barked just like a normal dog, and um, took off. Anyway, the rest are there, the rest will be there, be another probably four pups. And uh, they're old enough to look after themselves, work the roads, they'll be eating lizards and snails and all that sort of stuff. So what happens usually is we trap those ones later on. Uh, number one.